Great to have as much time as you want. See that? That's what I like to hear. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm delighted this bill is before the House and I want to congratulate the campaigners and Together for Safety who've been relentlessly pursuing this issue and driving us all to keep coming back to it because it's easy to have a win, like well, it's not easy to have a win like appeal. That wasn't an easy win. It was well fought for and, and won, but one could sit back and say, that's grand, that's done and dusted, and now we don't have to worry about it. But actually, um, most recently, being reminded at the uh, Health Committee in questioning with Dr. Mary O'Shea and her team, the protests outside abortion providers, uh, whether they're clinics or GPs' homes or hospitals, do act as a chill factor on the provision of a very essential service. And as previous speakers have said, the people have spoken, they have voted overwhelmingly to provide abortion services at home to women who seek them. And the fact that those services would then be subjected to um, what are often very brutal and um, you know, the, with, with, with very strong imagery, very insulting, very inaccurate, very strong, strong imagery, and very strong and, and aggressive uh, language um, is, is just not acceptable. I mean, and, and I know from experience, I know many of you in this house will know as well, when you're in that situation, you are vulnerable and you are uh, wanting to get your treatment as soon as possible, but to have to face a gauntlet of anti-choicers, many of whom are straight out of the fascist handbook, to have to face a gauntlet of that in order to access healthcare is just not acceptable. So I'm delighted we're attempting to do something about it. I have a couple of questions. One is uh, on the original Shannon private members bill. There was a section um, in, this, in the original bill that included banning harassment of abortion providers outside of safe, safe access zones. In other words, not being able to go to their homes or to harass them on the streets or whatever. Now, many of us today had to run a gauntlet across the road of uh, far-right protesters who want to undermine trans rights. Um, and, you know, you, you have to put up with that because it's a feature of modern life. But for women seeking health care and for doctors and others who are willing to provide that health care to be subject to harassment and violent attacks is just not acceptable. And we know that this has been a feature in other countries and very much part of the global uh, far-right movement today. They copy, uh, they copy each other's behaviour, they learn from each other's behaviour and they move from theme to theme in, in, in tandem with lies that uh, match each other. And the worst aspect of this has been seen in the United States where not recently, thankfully, but in the past, medical providers have been actually murdered at abortion clinics because of the um, because of the absolute hatred and bile that uh, is spewed from those who don't want women to have a choice. Um, so I think it's very good that this is here, but I will make the comment that it has taken some time. And it has taken time because I believe that this and previous governments have had to be dragged, screaming and kicking, to deal with the question of women's rights to uh, their reproductive rights. Um, and we're seeing the same now with the abortion review. We are very reluctant, not us in this house generally, but we, the government, are very reluctant to act on the abortion review and what Dr. Mary O'Shea has recommended, using all sorts of excuses to delay and you know, bury their heads in the sand and say they can't or won't do anything about it. So the movement outside this house for full reproductive rights is hugely important. I want to move on to some of the detail in the bill. Um, and as has been mentioned, having no clear system for Gardaí to record warnings that are issued to people who move from protest to protest to avoid arrest is really not good enough. We need to find a system, um, maybe beyond Pulse, some other kind of a new system, but we need to find a system where the Gardaí will be obliged to record those who breach the limits of a protest outside uh, an abortion clinic or outside the uh, venue of a provision of abortion. Because once they ha have the freedom to move around, and they do, you know, notice the characters that you see today outside the Dáil or in the libraries in Cork last week or at Inch uh, the week before, or indeed burning refugees out of their tents in Sandwich Street, these guys move around, they coordinate, and they avoid repeated arrest. So I think it's very, very central to what this bill can do is for the Gardaí to be able to track 
who has been given a warning so they cannot move freely from one, pro one protest to another and pretend that, they, um, pretend that they're not committing an offence. The other issue I'd like to cover is the question of what uh, has been referred to here, previous speakers, not today, that this is somehow a huge encroachment on the right to protest. Now, I'd like to point out to people, and this was uh, the model that we used to argue for uh, restriction zone at the, at the pre-legislative scrutiny. There is a thing called the Electoral Act of 1992, and under that act, any person who uh, cannot shall, shall not interfere or obstruct or impede an elector, i.e. anybody going to vote, coming and going to the vicinity of a polling station. Because there is a curtilage, and take note of the word, because we had quite a lot of argument about this word and the, uh, what it actually meant, Minister, um, and the Gardaí drilled down very carefully into this, but there is a curtilage of 100 metres around the polling station within which you cannot go to hand out a leaflet or to talk to a constituent or a voter that's going into the polling station. And I no doubt have people, many people in this House have experienced the speed and the accuracy with which Gardaí will move in and tell people who are distributing your leaflet as a candidate to get outside that 100 metre zone. And I think this is the, the proactive measure that we have to impl uh, apply when dealing with those who want to fill their hate and bile against women and the providers of abortion outside, um, outside clinics that are looking after women's reproductive rights. And for that reason, I think this idea of a courtilage and the zone and the limitations of it are something that needs to be clarified and emphasised and has to be pursued with vigour uh, by the Gardaí. And I just want to note that... The, the, the argument was used here last week that there was a, what they call a pro-life protest recently in town that gathered near the Rotunda Hospital, and would that mean that that therefore is illegal? Um, well, first of all, I want to take that language back. These people are not pro-life. They don't care if women die. That's why they opposed the repealing of the Eighth Amendment, uh, but they are anti-choice. And when they uh, attend rallies with banners and images that are offensive, that are untruthful, and that are um, um, intimidating to women seeking abortion, then they should not be allowed to do it within the limitation of that law and the 100 metres around the courtilage. And when the far right gather at the Garden Remembrance and are targeting um, women and their right to choose, we, we've seen them alongside the Catholic Church lately, and indeed alongside some deputies in this house who have had their photographs taken with leading fascist um, anti-choicers on those demonstrations. Uh, not long ago, they, these people were arrested for burning the tents in Sandwich Street, um, and by their friends, ye shall all know them. Um, but they like to portray these protests as a religious uh, event with people quietly praying, but the reality is far from that. These protests are nasty, they're intimidating, they're often violent, and I myself and others in this House who've been fighting for the pro-choice movement for years have been at the receiving end of the violence, being pushed, punched in the face and threatened by those who don't want women to have a choice. So it's no wonder that women find it intimidating when they're seeking health care and that abortion providers find it extremely intimidating and hence Mary O'Shea's answer to a question that these are effectively providing a chill factor on the provision of abortion. This is happening right across the world but it's a new phenomena in this country because we now have the, uh, be, you, know, th you know, thankfully because of the repeal result, we now have the option of receiving uh, abortion care at home. And just to add, I think it must be especially intimidating for GPs and providers of the practice in rural areas where the population is lower, where there's less people to see it or to stand up to this kind of intimidation, and indeed for GPs who provide a service from their home and their children going to and from school have to pass these protests or have to deal with the abuse that uh, ensues because of it. So it's really important that we deal with this and deal with it correctly and have everybody in the House recognise this is not an attempt to clamp down on the right to protest. It's an attempt to allow you to protest if you must 
against the provision of health care for women, but to do so without intimidating, intimidating them, abusing them, or the, the, those who are providing them the care. So we want to see this bill move forward quickly, Minister, and, uh, and to thank those who've been campaigning for a long, long time now to see it through fruition.